Today we're going to show you how to replace or service some of the injectors in Phytex throttle body EFI systems. Today on Phytex Tech Tuesday, we're going to show you how to service the injectors on a Phytex throttle body. Now why would you want to service the injectors on your system? You may have a fault code in your handheld called injector code PO201 through 208. The number designates where in the EFI system the injector is, but that would designate that one of the injectors is not working. Another thing that you may have noticed that got you to looking for that code is you were driving along and then all of a sudden you got a real bad hesitation and the engine wasn't running quite well. You checked that fault code and there it was. Another thing that you might have noticed is you pulled the air cleaner off and one of the barrels isn't spraying fuel. That's probably one of the injectors not working properly. Let's dive in and see some of the things to do when you're getting into the injectors, how to check and service them so you have a fully functioning EFI system. So we have a throttle body in front of us right here. You may be working on your vehicle, but I do encourage pulling off the throttle body and working on a bench. It makes servicing a lot easier. Now to get started, you wanna crack the fuel line to relieve fuel pressure. When you go to do this, be careful of fuel spray. It is a good idea to put a rag around the fitting when you're loosening the fitting, so fuel dribbles out, catches on the rag, and doesn't spray all over the place. Once you removed your inlet line, you're now ready to remove the two Allen head screws with a 3 16 Allen head to get the cover off. If you're going to be replacing the injector on a classic EFI, the bolts are going to be directly on the top and the cover pulls straight from the side. Whereas with the throttle body injection like the Ghost Street, they kind of pull up at an angle and the screws are on the side. Now that we have our screws pulled off, now we can pull up and off the cover to expose our injectors. Now don't be alarmed if the injector pulls off and sticks in the end cap. It's totally fine, you just pull it out. But now you have your two injectors here with our two connectors. You can unplug the connector and you'll notice a little white collar with a number on it. This number indicates what injector you're looking at. This one being a number three, this is injector number three. So if you're getting a fault code in your handheld, you'll move to this injector. Now we can pull our injector out. Now that we got our injector removed, there's a serial number printed on the side of it. The very last number indicates what the size of the injector is. Refer to this chart to identify your injector size and part numbers. This one being a dash three. A dash three injector is going to be a 62 pound injector and that comes standard with our Ghost Street 400 horsepower EFI system. So if you have a bad injector and need a replacement, be sure to have a matching size all the way around. Now that we got our injector removed, let's discuss the most common reason why injectors fail. This will be because of contamination getting into the injector. Now our fuel delivery systems we recommend a 10 micron filter to filter out any type of debris leading up to the injector. But if debris gets up to it, there is a small little screen inside, but it could only do so much. Once contaminants get inside the injector, it could stick it open, stick it shut, short it out, and ultimately make the injector fail. If we are uncertain if the injector itself is bad or if there's an issue somewhere else, one of the things that we can do is move the injector location to another spot and see if our problem moves with it. If it does, we can confirm that the injector is the issue. Other issues that can happen with the injector is you can tear one of the O-rings or the basket filter in the end can be clogged. Good thing is, is we could service those independently of the injector itself. To service the O-rings, we could just pull the O-rings off and buy aftermarket O-rings anywhere online or even at an auto parts store. If you want to service the basket filter, using a number 10 sheet metal screw, you could thread into the end of the injector. Be sure not to thread it in too far, but once it threads into that basket filter, you could use some pliers or a bench vise and yank the filter screen out. 
At that point, we could either replace the filter or clean that filter. And now that we have our replacement injector, we can reverse the process of removing the injector to put it back in. One of the big tips on making the installation much easier is lubricating the O-rings prior to installation. You don't need anything fancy for this. WD-40 or engine oil works just fine. When installing your injector fuel rail again, be sure the O-rings line up with the bores in the cover and push firmly back into place. If you're having to force it, you're probably pinching an O-ring. So take your time and make sure that it fits together snugly and smoothly. Install your screws. Now that we got our fuel rail reinstalled, we want to hook up our inlet line again, key on, and double check for fuel leaks to make sure that we have no fire hazards. We could have leaks where the injectors are or even at your inlet fitting where you tighten it up. Once you're clear of any type of fuel leaks, now we can go into the handheld under the fault code section and click the clear faults in the lower left hand corner to clear the injector fault. From there, you're ready to start your engine. So there you have it. That's what's involved on replacing the injectors on your Fitech throttle body EFI system. And remember, good filtration is very important for the longevity of the injector. Thanks for tuning in. Be sure to visit us weekly for more tech tips.